The talk is entitled Truly Cardless, Jackpotting an ATM using auxiliary devices by Olga Koshetova and Alexei Osipov. Good Abend, meine Damen und Herren. Hello, everyone. Thanks uh, for waiting the chunk uh, right here in biggest place in my life, not in some other places. Uh, today we are going to describe some new ways to uh, th that allows you, not you, bad guys, to eject money from the ATM uh, without uh, touching them. For example, let's say uh, just for, uh, through the air. Uh, I am previously Olga Kochetova, but uh, now I changed my uh, family name, and he is Alexei Osipov. Uh, we are uh, the part of security assessment uh, team of Kaspersky Lab, and uh, all of uh, things that we uh, provide, uh, provide you today, and uh, that we uh, usually put in our presentations, uh, we collect through the, uh, our everyday work, our uh, during our ATM security assessment, penetration testing, forensic investigation, and of course, if we have enough time, uh, we do some researches. And uh, we try to, uh, to improve ATM security uh, around the world, but sometimes we are not successful, unfortunately. Uh, so, uh, let's... Uh, uh, refresh your memories about ATM. Uh, you should remember from, pre from previous talks that uh, ATM is just ordinary computer. Uh, looks like your uh, home computer, but uh, this particular uh, box consists of uh, various devices that interact with uh, consumers, such as keyboard, uh, sorry, pin pad, um, uh, touch screen, uh, some buttons, card reader, and um, devices to interact with cash, such as a dispenser, uh, cash recycler, cash in module, and so on, etc., etc. And uh, let's concentrate on interfaces that are using uh, inside the ATM. There are plenty of various connectors and ports. Uh, sometimes we are uh, pretty surprising when we uh, discovered some. Uh, unusual uh, interfaces inside the ATM, but the most common uh, is uh, RS-232 or RS-485 uh, and, uh, of course, USB. Uh, and uh, the problem with USB is uh, that, that these uh, connectors, this uh, bus, is uh, pretty uh, common around the world. and. Uh, Devices connected to the PC through the USB, and of course, technicians also use uh, free USB to put uh, uh, flash drive to install some new malware or some new software, it doesn't matter. Uh, some antennas, GSM modules uh, can also connect it to ATM PC through USB ports, and sometimes these uh, USB uh, cables uh, might be discovered outside the USB. Um, you might know that uh, USB classes are pretty... Um, Uh, pr pretty familiar with uh, um, every guys who are developers or who are um, re reverse engineers, and um, uh, there are plenty of various classes described in um, libraries. And uh, the most common for ATM is uh, human interface device and uh, vendor specific. Uh, human interface device it's uh, usually pin pad, card reader, uh, let's say input output devices. And um, speaking about vendor-specific uh, uh, communication uh, description, uh, vendor might uh, develop some strange things and use, it, uh, use the description to communicate, for example, with dispenser or with uh, other uh, devices inside the ATM. But uh, let's con uh, continue with uh, human interface device you might understand that 
human interface device. It's just a keyboard or a mouse. And uh, it's typically it's a plug and place device. You just uh, put something with USB, and the driver, uh, dr driver will automatically install it, and uh, this device uh, will ready for use. Um, when we uh, discovered that uh, pretty uh, small devices like Tinsy uh, might, uh, might be used as a keyboard, uh, it was five or six years ago. Uh, we uh, created a proof of concept video and uh, came to some uh, big companies uh, that are related to ATM in Russia. And they, was, um, <clears throat> they were pretty upset about what we discovered and um, asked us to not disclose this information for the public uh, until this year. Uh, but we uh, can discuss this in some let's say, private conversation or private, uh, s some private meetings. Uh, but now we are going to show you, uh, finally, how, uh, what we can do with uh, Tinsia uh, using it in the ATM. Here is our demo uh, that we reproduced in our test bed, but uh, it's uh, uh, emulate or real cases in some banks and some um, in the wild. Uh, some devices that are interconnected through USB might be uh, in, uh, deinstalled for the uh, maintenance or something, and this, uh, uh, their USB cables uh, are available to other uh, connection, other, other communication. We obtain uh, the, not we, attacker. Attacker obtain access to USB uh, connect uh, Tinsy, especially uh, with, with special code, and uh, this code uh, helped to bypass uh, kiosk mode on the ATM and uh, run malware, uh, just ex executable file from remote shar. Uh, there will, will be no um, uh, logs on the uh, in ATM journal uh, because it's just uh, something that looks like. Uh, put in some letters uh, through a keyboard. Uh, these cases are um, very hard to investigation. Um, and uh, uh, about uh, 20 minutes, uh, sorry, uh, 20 s uh, seconds uh, is enough to eject a portion of money up to 40 banknotes from the ATM just using Tinsia. There are obviously other kinds of devices that has more, uh, more memory, that has different features, for example, remote, con remote control or some other kinds of uh, malicious activity like uh, USB cables that are not actually cables but also kind of teensy device. You can buy them for 40 bucks or 100 bucks, so doesn't matter, and they pretty much do the same thing. You obfuscate something as a legitimate device and the technician use it to install it into the ATM machine. And in this case, uh, you just connect it to the devices. But there are also another kinds of devices that are already connected and already used. And for example, for example, technician need to maintenance this kind of ATM machine. It's through the whole ATM with no external cables, no, no nothing. Or maybe there is cute kitten in, on the ATM machine that uh, technician don't want to disturb and because he loves kittens. Sometimes to actually access these cables, you need to go into ATM machine and uh, do some stuff inside of it. And it's kind of messy, it's kind of uh, giving me problems. And technicians give a solution. We will use the wireless keyboards. Unfortunately, it's uh, the general idea in some banks and in some companies that they can use single dongle that is connected to the ATM machine and uh, conduct different activities uh, on the ATM machines. And it's kind of scary because there are different kinds of research that um, 
affected this uh, this kind of uh, devices, wireless devices. For example, mouse jacking attack that uh, affects NRF uh, 2.1 uh, chip. This chip is excellent. It's uh, very cheap. It's um, uh, used everywhere, and uh, it doesn't provide any security. Um, the customer or the vendor should implement their own crypto uh, inside these devices and protect the, uh, the customers against uh, malicious modification. And there's also uh, devices from the Great Scott gadgets uh, that use Bluetooth communication and affect this kind of communication in the malicious way. Uh, what are needed to affect ATM machine? We just need to go to this couple of sites, download the GitHub versions of the uh, exploits, use dongle that is used, for example, for quadracopters or the original dongles that are used by company Logitech, and do some malicious stuff. Here's typical setup. We just use ordinary Android uh, phone and connect uh, our dongle to this cable and uh, leave it nearby the ATM machine. Next time, the uh, normal te genuine technician goes to this ATM machine. He will use his uh, little keyboard to uh, do some stuff and leave it away. But on the ATM machine, there will be a uh, near the ATM machine will be something that obtained the address of this uh, keyboard or even mouse. And uh, here is one more uh, proof of concept video that we produced. Uh, as Alexei mentioned, uh, we used uh, uh, mouse jack tool to uh, identify uh, the address of this dongle. And uh, when we obtain this address, we uh, uh, connect it to this dongle and uh, send uh, specially pre prepared comments to the ATM. Uh, and uh, it might be. Uh, uh, run uh, uh, malware from remote share, or we can uh, put uh, some uh, comments to eject money from the ATM just to, uh, using uh, this communication with dongle, like uh, ordinary uh, keyboard. And uh, uh, after some times, we will get the money. Uh, this unauthorized cash out uh, it ta uh, typically takes about uh, 40 seconds uh, uh, to eject a uh, portion up to 40 banknotes from the ATM, and we can repeat it again and again until ATM, all ATM with uh, such kind of dongles are will empty. And the sponsor of this video is uh, Logitech, who uses... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who uses excellent uh, devices that uh, can be used by anyone, for technician uses or for the customer uses. And they are excellent in both ways, because we can create this video, but they also kind of... Uh, consider the problems that they, uh, they are facing and the newer versions of this dongle or the newer firmwares that can be installed on this kind of devices are actually protected from the malicious behavior. And uh, it's pretty much excellent because the community that uh, found problem uh, identified the solution and the solution was implemented on the devices. Everything, everyone wins. There are also other flavors of devices I already mentioned. There is Bluetooth keyboards or some radio keyboards that can be used. And a couple of days ago, there was someone in the Twitter who made a video with uh, intercepting the communication of his keyboard that is completely in the plain text. And the general idea about the wireless keyboards in ATM machines, it's uh, that uh, ATMs, 
are actually unattended devices. They uh, stay there, and most of the time they are not used by customers, and malicious guy can actually do everything with it through the keyboard and for, through the mouse uh, remotely and see if someone gets to the ATM machine, he just press Alt-Tab and return to the original uh, behavior of ATM machine. It's excellent for research, but I don't advise you to do, to do it because uh, yes, you can obtain different fancy devices that intercept uh, wireless communications. They can sniff nearby devices. And actually, uh, if you speak about the wireless keyboards, there's also another kind of devices that is pretty much scary because some years ago uh, there was um, investigation in Mexico by uh, Brian Krebs about the Bluetooth uh, sniffers that were used in the gas pumps. And these kind of devices can also be detected with the uh, Ubertus uh, devices. And if you see something in the air near the ATM machine, please do send some kind of message to the bank because sometimes it's actually malicious activity and it's not only about uh, f fancy videos and fancy devices. And uh, if uh, ATM uh, technicians somewhere here, please stop uh, using uh, wireless keyboard. But let's uh, continue with the uh, other part. Uh, that is pretty upset uh, when you should pay for taxes or uh, buy tickets and pay some money again. And uh, that feeling that you should uh, uh, input some tons of numbers and letters to pay something uh, in ATM. Uh, but this uh, problem, uh, when uh, some people, con consumers, uh, should uh, spend a lot of time to uh, enter in the numbers and uh, uh, make an error and uh, do it again and again. Uh, now some ATMs uh, consist of uh, barcode readers to collect all the information about your uh, payments or about your uh, tickets, taxes, and doesn't matter, from the barcodes or from the QR codes, 1D codes or 2D codes. And uh, in some banks uh, already implemented the feature when uh, consumer might uh, uh, make a special, cre create some special uh, barcode inside the uh, mobile p uh, application and uh, withdraw money without cards. And uh, of course, uh, uh, presentation without uh, mention of bitcoins, it's uh, not good presentation. So the, this ATM uh, for bitcoins also use barcodes. Uh, barcodes are everywhere. Uh, for example, here in um, uh, Chaos Communication Congress, uh, plenty of barcodes uh, and even on toilet walls. Uh, don't ask uh, how I found these uh, uh, barcodes. Uh, and uh, if you uh, want to buy some stuff, uh, for example, Club Mate in the convenience store, uh, typically cashier uh, use the barcode installed on the uh, cash desk and uh, uh, put a uh, bottle or put some stuff to this uh, barco barcode reader to, uh, to enter the, the uh, information about this uh, stuff to the uh, program. Uh, thanks uh, for Chinese guys from Tencent X Lab uh, when they uh, discovered this uh, mm, Funny, uh, that, that, uh, the, when they tell us funny story about how to bypass uh, cashier uh, and uh, put some um, special, specially create a QR code and uh, download and execute application. Uh, there are plenty of uh, codes to and pl plenty of uh, possibility to uh, eject. Uh, uh, control uh, keyboards, key keyboard inputs to the barcode, or um, put some information. Uh, there are plenty of uh, uh, plenty of ways, uh, but we uh, prepare 
one more video when we um, create special barcodes and put it on the Kindle to by bypass uh, kiosk mode on the ATM and uh, uh, make some piece of magic from remote share again. Uh, there will be no logs again uh, inside the ATM uh, uh, journals because uh, it looks like some, some letters, some uh, numbers uh, were uh, input from the keyboard. And uh, if uh, uh, banks will try to understand what happened, uh, they just um, mm. Should understand that uh, in in logs uh, there um, there will be some strange situation when uh, a keyboard uh, when a barcode reader is uh, looks like keyboard. Uh, typically, a uh, barcode reader in ATM uh, co connected to uh, to the PC through uh, COM or USB ports, uh, and uh, on the other end. Uh, Oh, the uh, cable is uh, port looks like VGA, but uh, we had some strange uh, and uh, maybe uh, let's say protected uh, ATM uh, when the uh, USB uh, cable was cut it up and uh, a couple of hours to solder in the new cable and uh, we had the the uh, right way and the proper way to eject money from the ATM uh, when I mentioned uh, in the previous video. Uh, the original research uh, involves some reconfiguring of the barcode reader or using the codes that are inside of the barcode reader already. And we found, uh, we c came up with the simple fuzzing idea to use it against any barcode that is out there just enable it somehow, for example, pay for something or do something. Uh, use uh, the code 128 barcode with special symbol FNC3 in the, at the start. And uh, actually, barcode readers are beeping. And if it beeps the wrong way, it seems that uh, this code is accepted. Sometimes, in the original research, it's also mentioned that uh, most of the barcode readers are using the USB cables, but this particular one wasn't using it, and we should uh, uh, rewire it. But uh, during our assessments, we have seen barcode readers that are already in keyboard mode with the USB connection, and obviously you can send some symbols that are not the printed ones, and they actually do some interesting stuff with the uh, uh, reader itself. For example, it uses different function buttons, it's using different uh, special combinations of buttons, like control, delete, and so on. And of course, do it responsibly, don't do it at the Congress, uh, because we are all using barcodes, and sometimes they also can be affected. That was uh, about the barcodes, and uh, we were speaking also about the migration of the vi from Windows XP to Windows 7 that uh, were during the previous years, and we prepared some small uh, comparison, like uh, the problems that were facing by Windows XP and Windows 7 that were not used for a long time. For example, Windows 7 was were implemented only two years ago or one year ago on ATM machines. We have uh, some nice vulnerabilities on in Windows XP like MS08067, and uh, we actually haven't seen the fully patched system, uh, fully patched ATM system with Windows XP. The same problem goes with Windows 7. Uh, we have nice vulnerability MS1710 that can actually be exploited by the remote user. And we also haven't seen the fully patched ATM system. But yay, they migrated to Windows 7. And for example, these are the data from the ATM assessment. And the screenshots are the forensic investigation of one ATM machines that were affected by 
uh, WannaCry virus that were affecting different kinds of devices, and it doesn't matter if it was Swift or if it was computer, uh, ordinary home system or if it was ATM machine. We have also seen the shift from the IPv4 to IPv6. Unfortunately, who uses IPv6? And in the internet, there are some sites that are already implementing it, but in the networks, everyone uses IPv6 because the new operating systems by default enable it and no one uses it, but malicious guys can actually abuse the firewalling rules that allow anyone to use this communication in the wrong way. PowerShell is excellent because it's for couple of years it was not detected by anyone it was uh, like silver key to any system if we have faced the Windows 7 you can actually do some great stuff like mimic ads or the injection get strokes anything unfortunately the honeymoon was over and here's the current detection of the problems with of the malware that is used to, uh, that is using PowerShell with uh, ATM machines, it's much more easier because you can use code from the MSDN or different sites that provide default code to interact with uh, COM ports or interact with libraries. And often, the, this type of communication is legitimate. And often, it is used by the uh, original software but the malicious guy can issue the common dispense all the money from the ATM machine with PowerShell. It's only a few um, keystrokes, and it's actually very easy to use it with QR codes or with uh, uh, different external keyboards. Uh, it's for not a conclusion, uh, there are different kinds of devices that are already there, and we have investigated some of them and most of them. We haven't spoke ab spoken about touch screens because they're obviously another point of entry to the ATM machines. There are different NFC readers that also can be affected, and so on and so forth. There are biometric devices that we have spoken two years ago at this very same conference, and I think there is a solution against the, the problems with the iris. You can just close your eyes and don't use them. Uh, we are thankful for community uh, because of the gadgets that were created, and they are very helpful for us and very helpful for you to analyzing what communications are there. And it's also another point of, that we haven't spoken today, that you can actually abuse the drivers that are used by the ATM machine, because vendor-specific, it's the vendor-specific. It's like the SCADA systems or different ICS systems. The data that is transmitted is actually the uh, can be prone through errors or some problems. And you can exchange all the, these two devices with single radio that is, uh, was provided by the uh, Congress or at the camp. It's an awesome uh, device that actually implements both the phase dancer capabilities, radio capabilities, and you can do everything with it and abuse uh, different activities. We are very thankful for the older researchers that are there who uh, who given us the inspiration to uh, use something against ATM machines. We are thankful for the Congress, for the excellent devices, excellent community, excellent communication, because some of our ideas are brought from the people, and we are thankful for everyone who is attending. And. Uh, there are different kinds of devices that can be accessed uh, remotely, but there is also a possibility to just cut a hole in the ATM machine, and we are thankful vendors who provide us with the work that we are doing. Security is a process, and I hope that uh, we, will, we are making ATMs better, and we are trying to do our best to help the community, and there is something could do it cheaper. Thank you, thank you, everyone. If you have any questions, please ask. Thank you, Olga. Thank you, Alexei, for sharing your impressive work. I hope we have some questions. I see over there, microphone three, please.
Uh, hi, so, so you looked at wireless keyboards and mice and stuff like that, but did you look at wireless uh, cards like an FC? Uh, yes, we have analyzed some of the uh, devices that uh, NFC readers, but unfortunately we can't speak about them right now because we are in the process of uh, uh, communicating with vendor to fix these vulnerabilities because the problems that we have shown on the slides are actually already known and we try to drive attention to these problems because they do exist right now. They are here for two, three, four years and the motto of this uh, Congress is remembering Remembering, uh, refreshing memories, sorry. And uh, we try to refresh memories not only for vendors, but also for the people who are using ATMs. We have also questions from the internet. My signal angel. Yes, the internet wants to know how you did at hardware to test this stuff on. Uh, can we get the hardware? Yeah. Actually, you can buy it from eBay. It's uh, cheap as uh, sand in matter of the ATM machine because, for example, you can buy the old servers that uh, were pr very pricey at the time and now they're uh, sold for 1,000 euros. And for the ATM machines, it's actually the same. The most expensive part of ATM machine, it's actually the safe and you don't need the safe to conduct research. Microphone one, please. Yes. Will, will you be releasing any of the code that was done for your testing? Uh, I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Uh, your friend can speak to my friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another question from the internet. Yes, the internet wants to know um, regarding the remote attacks. So, uh, did you have access to the bank network or something? And uh, how do you figure out what you actually need to do? Uh, we actually bought the ATM machines for the, our test bed, and we are analyzing it in our spare time. And we also communicating with banks and providing services from them to. And uh, for them to understand what problems they're facing. So yes, we are, we are communicating with uh, real banks and real ATM machines. And another one from the internet. Yes. The internet wants to know um, for one of the remote uh, radio things, if it's a seven, uh, 27 megahertz uh, technique like uh, karaoke. Uh, yes, there are keyboards that are using 27 megahertz to uh, communicate with the dongle, and this communication is generally affected. Okay, ah, over there, microphone five, I guess, yeah. Have you, have you tested this in the wild? Uh, we're testing assessments, so I don't advise you to test it in the wild. And as for the barcode readers, so we trying to test them, for example, in the different uh, shops or different uh, uh, vending machines that uh, to analyze if it's possible to send them the control codes. So sometimes, maybe. He's joking. Another one from the internet. Okay. Um, do you know why most ATMs run Windows instead of Linux with maybe is not as vulnerable to malware and other vulnerabilities? Uh, yes, it's an excellent question that is asked every time that we are given presentations. Uh, unfortunately, there is a legacy code that is used only on the Windows machines, and unfortunately, the vendors of the devices inside the ATM machines, they don't disclose the specifications of the devices, and there is no, there is no easy possibility for the Linux uh, to use these kind of devices. But when uh, we get to the ATM machines, we actually reboot them into the Linux and use uh, Python to interact with them. It's generally possible, but it's not done because legacy. OK, I don't see any more questions. So let's thank the speakers again. Mm.